Hello guys and welcome to a new crypto video of the most beautiful music instrument there is the crypto violin guys i have an amazing video for you today and today we're going to talk about xrp price predictions and where i think the price can go and what you're really holding because i want you to know what you're holding i made the video it will be a little bit longer than normal but i assure you that in the end if you watch the whole video you will realize what you are holding you will be very happy you will not be scared of the dips and it will be very useful and you will know where the price is going because we are talking at least three digits here and i will explain it i will explain it to the bone guys everything i will explain okay if you bear with me this video in the end you will know all about xrp all about the company ripple all about what it is solving and in the end you will have a big smile on your face because you will know what you are holding and you will have the confirmation that we will all be rich. Please don't forget to subscribe, guys. I'm at 2.5k subscribers. I would love to go to the 5, guys. Let's go. And if we go to the 5, I will play some beautiful tunes on my crypto violin. Guys, are you ready? I cannot hear you. Are you ready? And then let's dive into the juicy and bullish content I have for you today. Yes, so guys, before we get into the numbers, I want to share with you this video where David Schwartz, Chief Technology Officer of Ripple, and he will explain something about Ripple the company, about XRP, and let's watch. Yeah, um, this has been the narrative for a few years because I've talked to your CEO, Brad, you know, fairly often, and he's made the case this is a way for banks to save money, use XRP as kind of a bridge currency, but i got to say, uh, it doesn't seem to be happening. It seems every year this is kind of the promise, but we're not seeing a lot of adoption. What's going on there? So the guy speaks for everybody. They saying, OK, what? where's the adoption? Where's the big price swings? What happens with mooning? David, explain to me. And he's explaining it. Um, I would agree that adoption of digital assets has been a little slower. Or I mean, you could see it as being incredibly quick or incredibly slow, depending on what time frame you think is reasonable. I would say revolutionizing international finance is not something that you would expect to happen overnight. Revolutionizing international finance is not something that happens overnight, guys. That's what they want to do. That's what they are achieving, guys. So why? Why does it need to happen overnight, guys? They're, they're revolutionizing the whole financial sector, guys. Okay. They cannot do it overnight. When Ripple reaches their goal, you will not believe the prices where XRP will go. We listen. But it is a multi-step process, and I think the first problem that we encountered, I mean, we kind of thought that we could take a direct line to settling with a digital asset, and I think a lot of people thought that, well, now we have digital assets, let's just use them for payments, and that'll be that. Part of the problem is that the payment systems are just not capable of supporting instantaneous settlement. So if you think about a payment system like SWIFT, where you just kind of push a payment message out, and you don't necessarily know the entire path, and you don't know the fees until later, uh, you don't even know if the destination account even exists until some time later when the payment is actually processed by the, the, by the destination institution. There's no way that you could build instantaneous settlement into a system like that. So we kind of found ourselves in this situation where if we wanted institutions to settle their international payments with a digital asset, we first had to rebuild the payment messaging, sort of the plumbing. And we discovered something interesting on the way. What we discovered was that the existing plumbing was so bad, I mean, it dates back to batch computing days, um, that just improving that messaging was a product. That was something that banks and non-bank financial institutions would be interested in. What David Schwartz is saying here, guys, that they want to build a car, that they want to build a supercar, but they need to build the roads first. Building the roads, that's a business on itself, guys. And XRP is the Ferrari that's gonna ride on it, but there are no roads yet. Imagine riding a Ferrari on the, uh, in the jungle or in, in the mud. That's not possible. So that's what he is explaining. That's why XRP didn't moon yet, okay? We listen further. Focused on building a top-notch payment network that can settle with a digital asset. And I think it's fair to say that we haven't yet proven that we can actually settle with a digital asset. We're just making that transition from building a payment network that can settle with a digital asset to figuring out where you, you really want to settle with a digital asset and making that settlement happen. If I can interrupt a second, that's my understanding. You built XCurrent, right, as a messaging product? Correct. And a lot of people seem to think it's superior to Swift. And you almost have this successful enterprise software business on your hands. And good for you, but uh, it seems Ripple wants to do something more, which is to encourage the users of this to also 
wrap some XRPs into the transactions, but it sort of seems like you're shoehorning, shoehorning something in there that a lot of banks are like, wait a minute, we don't need this. We're just good with the messaging thing. So, so make the case for us why you need XRP in this. I would just start out by... Very good question, okay. Why do we need XRP? Why are not banks using XRP already? Here's the answer. I think that is, that is a fair point. I think we do have um, a, a struggle on our hands to convince particularly banks because banks are extremely conservative. They're very slow moving. What we've discovered is that non-bank financial institutions, payment companies are much, much more aggressive and they're much more interested in things that can save them time and money and cost. And so we built the X Rapid product as a way to kind of solve that problem. And um, it, it was adapted to the real life situation that we were facing. We kind of had this idea that institutions would hold XRP or a digital asset. They'd make their payments with a digital asset or regional hubs would settle with, dig with a digital asset. And for a variety of reasons, the world wasn't quite ready for that, including um, regulatory issues, lack of liquidity, immature ecosystem around digital assets. And so we couldn't aim directly for sort of the end state that we wanted. We had to come up with a more practical plan. X Rapid is aimed at two things. So one of them is sort of remittance type international flows where cost is very high and the volatility actually favors a digital asset, which is kind of bizarre. Usually people say the problem with digital assets is they have such volatility. But here, if you think about trying to pre-fund Mexican pesos on a Thursday to make payments on a Monday, that's a lot of volatility in Mexican pesos. Whereas if you can use XRP, which can move across the planet in just a couple of seconds, the volatility is actually less, even though... So it doesn't matter how volatile the price of XRP is because of its speed, it's always less volatile than other currencies like the dollar or the pesos. That's very interesting. XRP is inherently more volatile. You're only holding it for the minute or two it takes to complete the transaction. And I think the other thing that X Rapid handles is you might have a bank that doesn't want to touch a digital asset. They're like, we can't have XRP on our books. We can't buy it. We can't sell it. It's just too much of a regulatory challenge for us. But let's say they want to make a payment in Mexico and they don't want to have to pre-fund and they, want, they don't want to have to work, get you know, confirmation three days later. What they can do is they can have an X Rapid customer that probably won't be a bank. It'll be a payment company or some other type of institution. Like MoneyGram guys uses a digital asset to buy the Mexican pesos as an internal treasury function and then offers those Mexican pesos to the bank. So it's a workaround to the limitations that we found that we think is adapted to the way that to the situation that we're in today. Before we dive into some more price predictions, I want to show you what kind of company Ripple the company is. I want to show you this very short clip about uh, the donation that uh, Ripple the company made on the Ellen DeGeneres show. All right, we're back with a very mysterious Ashton Kutcher and this now all of a sudden the chair came out and he said he doesn't know what's going on. So are we both getting surprised by something? I don't know. <laughs> Except for, well, maybe I know something. Okay, what? What do you know? Okay, so you know I have this like tech investment fund with Guy here, right? Yes. It's called Sound Ventures and we invest in high tech companies, right? Right. So uh, Guy here. that's what the chair's for. So oh. maybe Guy should come out. Guy, come on out. Guy, it's Guy here. <laughs> you who don't know guy is a very close friend of mine who just happens to manage madonna and you two and amy schumer and everybody in the world and madonna you two and everybody else in the world he knows what he is doing he's managing you two he's managing madonna and he can manage his money very well because he invested in ripple let's watch cool guy great guy smart guy and their yeah. business partners so he's got a side gig working with me yes right? yes and so we do this thing called sound ventures we invest in tech companies and so we found this very interesting tech company called ripple that we're going to invest in right okay what is ripple so ripple is basically a platform to allow people to transfer money from bank account to bank account person to person really securely really simply really quickly uh -huh. okay so we found this company, we thought it was really, really interesting, and it runs on this stuff called XRP, which is a cryptocurrency, but basically it's just a way to get value from here to there, okay? So we're meeting with these folks, and they're explaining to us, the, the, the people who run it, this guy Chris Larson and a guy named Brad Garlinghouse, and they run it, and they're talking about the ethic of this company and this platform, 
and how they actually really care about being an ethical company and, and giving po a portion of this platform away to people that are doing good in the world. Mm -hmm. So it was around the exact same time that I ran into you on the beach and you told me about this amazing birthday gift that you got from Porsche. Uh, and that, and you explained to me that if you weren't doing this, that what you would be working on is that project, right? Yeah, I would be saving the gorillas, yes. You would be saving the gorillas, and everybody knows about this thing. So, but you never ask anyone for anything ever. And you said, at some point, I'm gonna need some help with this. And I said, uh, uh, you're asking me for help. You never ask anyone for help, ever. And at the same time, you called him. It was on your birthday. You called me on your birthday. I was like, wow, she's calling me on her birthday. Is everything OK? And you wanted to share with me this incredible story, uh, the gift of a lifetime that Portia gave you. And I promised you on that call that I'd be there to help you. And we are brothers, and we're here to help you. And so we talked to Chris and Brad, and we said, there's this amazing human being. And all they ever do is think about other people they can give to. Whether it's in New Orleans, whether it's in Montecito, whether it's the people that come here, the people out there, you're always thinking about everyone else. And we wanted to show you that people are thinking about you. So, on behalf of Ripple, we'd like to give you $4 million. <laughs> Usually people come out with the big giant check and do the like big giant check thing, but we can actually transfer it into Rwandan francs right now, right here. And all we have to do is push this button that's in your account. Do you want to push it? You want me to push it? I would like to push it. <laughs> I'd like to push it real good. <laughs> Bingo. You see what kind of company a Ripple is. It's very amazing. With these generous donations, such an amazing company, Ripple. And I want to share with you another video. I want to share with you another video of a worker, James Chauncey Kelly. And he shared with us what kind of company Ripple is and how it is to work there. Working at Ripple is what I imagine it felt like to people that were first uh, working for companies that were building the internet itself. And this is something that substantial and that big. We talk a lot about this concept of the internet of value. So, you know, we want to uh, get to a place where money moves just like information does. And it's instantaneous, uh, without friction, without lots of cost. We make things easier for someone sending money to their uh, relative in another country or migrant workers that have moved to one country from their homeland and they're trying to support their family somewhere. Ripple is a destination for people, certainly industry veterans in their careers of banking, finance, tech companies, because folks get to actually do the things here at Ripple they've been striving to do in the larger sort of financial services industry. Things move really fast, they get to build things, create things that they've only ever dreamed about doing. Not only is a destination point for industry veterans, uh, but people just starting out in their career that have um, an interest and desire and passion to be involved in a company that utilizes blockchain technology with the intersection of digital assets. This is the place they can uh, sort of learn and discover that. A big driver of, of our culture is our values. We use the acronym LEGOS. Um, LEGO stands for live it, enjoy it, get it done, go for it, own it, and say it. So each one of those represents how we operate every day, how we get things done. There's an extremely collaborative culture here. I, for example, can probably walk up to anyone's desk at any time, at any level in the company, to sort of talk about an idea, ask a question, ask for help on a project. The level of openness and willingness to sort of jump into any team's project they're working on is incredible here. I've rarely seen that in companies. I think you'll look back on, on where Ripple was 10 plus years from now and think, oh my God, I got to be a part of something that is changing the world. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. A once in a lifetime opportunity and you will be part of changing 
the world guys that being said let's dive into the price prediction and let's talk about how much xrp is going to be worth this article is telling us a lot of things and it's from primexpt.com and this article states ripple price prediction how much will xrp be worth okay let's scroll all the way down ripple price prediction 2021 2022 in a fractal from the last massive similarly sized and time frame falling wedge confirms xrp could see an explosive move once the breakout is back up with volume and investors realize the train is taking off without them fomo will likely help push xrp back to former highs and beyond the pent-up momentum for this downturn could result in as high as 25 dollars xrp before 2023 okay guys but now the juicy part comes Ripple was designed to replace much of the world's assets that get moved through the banking system through SWIFT. The blockchain supports other assets as well as the native XRP token, making it possible for trillions of assets to eventually be stored in XRP. If this happens, prices predict by a long-term pitchfork channel could help XRP pump to over $100 to $200 per token in a massive double top formation ending in 2025. We see it clear guys, $200 per token, you got it here. In this video guys, we saw what Ripple the company is, how XRP is actually the love Ferrari without the roads being built guys. The roads are being built and when this, when this beast of a Ferrari with a thousand horsepower hits the asphalt, hits the smoking asphalt, then it's gonna rip this asphalt apart and go to $200 immediately guys that's my prediction guys and again I want to hear what you think and I want to also hear what you think about this price and I hope you like this video and it gave you energy and you are bullish and juicy as me and guys I want to please kindly remind you to subscribe to like to my videos and comment if you have questions and see you in the next bullish and juicy video have a great day. Bye.